for each other one. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And I just quickly wanted to do a lesson. Um, I just received a comment from uh, this brother here, but it goes by the name of uh, of MIA, which I believe it stands for uh, Military Israelite Agent, right, or Military Israelite Actor. But I could be mistaken. Maybe it stands for something else. No, but we were going back and forth, you know, on the Apocrypha. You know, because it looks like he subscribes to maybe two books of the Apocrypha. But then the rest of them, you know, he doesn't subscribe to. And he, of course, he doesn't subscribe to one of the very important books, which is the book of Second Ezra's. So he subscribes to the first book of Ezra's. But somehow the second one isn't inspired, though. Even though we're going to skip the historical fact that the book of Ezra was written before Christ was on the scene. So therefore, we know that Christ quoted the Apocrypha in um, Matthew 23 and verse 37. He was quoting the book of um, 2 Ezra chapter 1 and verse uh, 30. It's literally the exact same saying, right? So, so Christ quoted directly out of the Apocrypha. Okay, but that's not what I want to deal with here. This is this is what I wanted to address is his latest comment. And he straight up lied about what the Apocrypha said. Now, maybe he just had a misunderstanding. I suppose that is a possibility. Maybe he had a misunderstanding when he was reading the text. But he totally misrepresented what the text says now again whether he did that on purpose to fit his narrative as mine god would say right to fit his narrative or to fit his sequence <laughs> inside joke or whether it was an accident i'm not sure okay so you know we'll see what happens when he responds but this is just going to be a quick ko right spiritual ko um he said it says and he's talking about Second Ezra's, the seventh chapter, which I'll show you later. Uh, says that Jesus will be revealed with those, those with him, and they shall rejoice with him for. Uh, listen to this part. It says with him for four hundred years, and after the four hundred years, Christ would die, and every human also die and the earth will be silent for seven days now keep in mind he said they shall rejoice with him for 400 years remember that okay remember that because that's what he's going to form the argument off of but that's the part where that he misunderstands what the text says so just remember that uh let me see uh, it says seven days which is not written anywhere in the scriptures and is ridiculous. And then it goes to tell us that the earth will give up the dead. And then Yahweh will be revealed at the seat of judgment. And then it tells us the whole he, he shall appear with hell on one side and a place of rest on the other, which is something only not God. What, what's that word there? Gnostics? I'll have to look that word up. Believe. It does not align with Revelation 20. Neither in any book when it says Christ will rejoice for 400 years and die. Remember that he said Christ will rejoice for four, rejoice for 400 years. Remember that. It says any, he makes a statement again down here. He said, so Christ lived for 400 years and died? Or is he supposed to die again? I cannot comprehend for the life of me why a Christian would believe such an insane prophecy. Now, remember, I told you to remember the statement that he made about the 400 years, right? Because that's where he goes off. You see, that's not, that's not what the Apocrypha says. Oh, excuse me. I, kicked, I clicked a, um, the ad at the bottom. Bear with me for a second. All right, but that's not, that's not what the prophecy says. So he misrepresented it. To make it look like it's saying that Christ is going to live for 400 years 
and then he was going to die. But that's not what it says. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 28. It says, For my son, Yehoshai, shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Now, why does it say that? It says within 400 years. The reason it said that is because this book was written roughly 400 years before Christ was on the scene. Okay, so that's why it says within 400 years is because this was written roughly 400 years before Christ was on the scene. Okay, so the whole thing you got caught up on is clear that you have a misunderstanding of what the text says. So that's not a failed prophecy. It doesn't say that Christ is going to live for 400 years. It says that he shall be revealed within 400 years because this was written 400 years before Christ was on the scene. So that's what this means, that Christ would be revealed within 400 years. Because this was written 400 years before Christ was revealed. So now we got that out of the way. Uh, let's see. It says, After these years shall my son Christ die, and all men that have life. And did not that happen? Is there anybody still alive today? From the generation that Christ lived in? Obviously the answer is no. I believe of course there's some people back in reincarnation of course. Right? That, that's true. But, but did those people physically die? And the answer is yes. So all those men died. Who were alive back in the time of Christ. They all died. Nobody's still alive from back then. And next part. I won't read it for the sake of time. I just wanted to show that this does correlate with, um, bear with me for a second. So let me just jump down a couple of sketches. Let's go to verse 32. It says, and the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her, and so shall the dust those that dwell in silence in the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment, and misery shall pass away, and long suffering shall have an end. But judgment only shall remain, truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. Right, and the rest of it is just going into the the judgment, right? But here's the thing, though. See, even made a mention that this doesn't correlate with Revelation, the 20th chapter, which goes into the um, the judgment, right? But what we just read, it talks about the places where souls are kept, right? They're giving up the souls of the people who were in those locations, right? And we see at the Lord sitting on his throne of, of judgment. And it also says that that long suffering is going to have an end and misery is going to pass away. And all you got to do is to the next, go to the next two chapters. And it literally says the same thing. Right? That all these things, these formal, former evil things have all passed away. Right? So that proves the Apocrypha is inspired off that one thing alone. Revelation 20 and verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the heaven and the, and the earth fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the small, and the great stand before Yahweh. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea, uh-oh, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, what I just read is clearly... 
being reiterated in the Apocrypha. Right, it's clearly being spoken of in the Apocrypha. Now, of course, it's not going to be exactly the same wording because both of the men did not see the exact same visions, right? So they describe it a little bit differently. But still, we can correlate and see it. They're talking about the same event. Okay, so his initial argument, his initial argument is totally refuted. Because he was trying to say that it says that, oh, well, Christ is going to live for 400 years. Well, that's not what it says. It says within 400 years, Christ will be revealed. And the book was written 400 years before Christ. So that's what it meant. You see, so you can't misrepresent what the text says. You, you, can't, you can't do that, man. That's a false equivalency. Look that word up. That's a false equivalency. You cannot use that as an argument because you clearly misrepresented what the text says. It doesn't say that Christ is going to live for 400 years. There's no text that says that. It said within 400 years that Christ would be revealed. Okay, so I just want to do a, a quick lesson on that. You know, I hope that was edifying, and um, I'm going to say shalom.